Hey friends all over the world, I had some issues with my last broadcast, but I, I want to I wanna talk to you about this tonight because this has really been on my heart and I want to really um, explain it to you in a way that you will understand. And I want to talk about the shocking truth behind demons. The shocking truth behind demons. A lot of what's out there, and I hate to even say this, but I got to say it candidly. A lot of what's out there, a lot of what's being taught, a lot of what's being presented, a lot of what's being sold is not correct when it comes to demons. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about just briefly, what is a demon? How do they operate? What's all of this stuff? And of course, this now goes into the truth about what real deliverance is. A lot of people right now are totally ignorant, totally ignorant of the demonic. They are totally ignorant of how the enemy has been operating in their lives. And I'm going to tell you why that is the case. One of the reasons why there's so much ignorance about demons is because we have fantas we have fantasticized. We have we have we have created a fantastic view of the demonic. We watch movies like The Exorcist. We are, we watch movies like um, uh, Possession and 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 Damien and 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 the the this and the that. And all of these movies. And so what we've done is we have developed a, a fantasy view of demons. And so the problem with that is that there are people, millions of people in the church who are demonized and don't even know they're demonized. Because we thought that when the Bible says that Jesus you know, cast out devils and he healed people that were possessed of demons. We're thinking of possession as somebody writhing and spitting up green stuff and levitating off the ground. But I submit to you, there are some demon possessed folks in the church. There are people in the body of Christ who are demon possessed in the, in the, in the scriptural sense of the word, because the word possession uh, comes from the Greek word daemonizome, and that Greek word daemonizome means to be demonized. A lot of times where the Bible talks about someone being demon-possessed, it's actually more accurately translated demonized, meaning that a person can be under demonic influence. A person can have something malevolent working in their lives whether they know it or not, whether they are aware or they are unaware. A person can have a malevolent force or malevolent spirit operating in their lives. We'll talk about some of those. But one of the problems in the church is that we've not dealt with demonization from a scriptural standpoint. I'm going to say another thing. It's going to make a lot of y'all mad, but I'm going to say it. Another problem is that we have a bunch of sensationalism going on. So we, we, we think that deliverance is somebody vomiting in a bucket, although there is no scriptural basis for that. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that a person can cough out, uh, sneeze out, uh, vomit out a demonic spirit. I believe a person can, can, can manifest deliverance through vomiting. I believe that that's a, that's a form of expelling of a demon. But, hear me, nowhere in scripture is spitting in a bucket the gauge for whether a person is delivered. And so what we're doing, we got folks spitting in buckets everywhere, right? And, and folks, and then we record them on social media, which is so demeaning. I don't care if you blur out their face. The fact that you're recording someone else's deliverance to make yourself look more anointed is disgusting. So, but that's a whole that's a whole another thing. Okay, so 
So you need to understand that that deliverance from a scriptural standpoint. Um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word is delivered. The Greek word sozo. It means to be saved. It means to be healed. It means to be liberated, to be restored. And this is the word that Jesus uses. He actually says in, in the book of Psalm 107, and he sent his word and heal them and deliver them from their destruction. There's another place in the gospel where it says that, and Jesus cast out demons with his word. Jesus did not walk around with a bucket in his hand. Jesus did not walk around, come on somebody, he didn't walk around with a bucket in his hand. And so here it is, if we, if we only understand demonization from the standpoint of people writhing on the floor, that's one form of demonization, or people uh, uh, spitting in a bucket, then we're going to miss the shocking truth behind deliverance and the shocking truth behind demons. And it's very disturbing that many folks in the body of Christ are demonized and don't even know it. You better hear me. Many people in the church have demons and they don't even know it. It's just like a functional addict. There's some people that can smoke crack and go to work every day. Not every crack addict is on the corner. Not every drug addict is in an institution. There are some functional addicts. In the same way, we have people in the body of Christ who are demonized, but they're still functioning. Yet their lives are experiencing oppression. Their lives are experiencing diminished spiritual vision. They're not able to... Okay, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me tonight, but y'all better get on here. Let me give you some time. Cannot live a holy lifestyle, no matter what you... You've been in church for years and can't live holy. You, you Listen to this. You can't keep a job. You can't keep a job. You've been, you've been a member of 15 churches in the last year. That's a demon. That's a demon. Every time you're corrected, you leave. Every time somebody rebukes you, you start your own church. You know why? Because you're demonized. That is demonizome, according to scripture. You are under, that person who does that is under the influence of a demonic spirit. Let me, let me, let me catch you, let me give you this. Offense is a demon. If you're offended all the time, you always offended. Well, I, Sister Betty didn't speak to me today and then Sister Johnson didn't give me a hug and, 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 and Sister Ninja over there, she didn't, she didn't even invite me out to Golden Corral, even though I don't need to be eating anyway because I'm probably about 60 pounds overweight. But, but anyhow, she didn't, she didn't invite me to her cornbread party. And so now you're jacked up on the inside. You know why? Because it's a demon. It's a demon. That is a demonic spirit. Let me tell you the three areas that Satan attacks believers. You need to catch this or you'll never catch anything else. Number one, temptation. The number one entrance to demonic powers is through temptation. If the devil can tempt you and get you like Eve to eat something or partake in something that God forbids, he can come into your garden. He can come into your life and he can steal your life, steal your dominion, steal your authority, steal, steal your influence. Secondly is deception because first thing the enemy did, the Bible says that Eve was deceived, meaning that the enemy operates through deception. He tries to get you uh, to believe something that's not true. Glory be to God. Thirdly, the enemy operates through distraction, meaning that if he can take your attention off of something or someone in this case that you should be focused on, he can take advantage of you. And fourthly is oppression. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Many believers are dealing with demonic oppression, demonic oppression in their thoughts, 
in their attitude, in their health. We don't think of that. If the, the fact that so many people in the body of Christ are sick, we don't think of that as demonic. Let me tell you something. Cancer is a whole demon. Cancer is a whole demon. These things are not natural. And yet many people are being afflicted. Let me tell you something quickly. You ever have that person, uh, 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 the, the, or you may know of someone who has the creditor or the debt collector that calls, and they say, hey, this is so-and-so, and sometimes they try to be real slick. And they'll say, oh, this is so-and-so calling from so-and-so, and we want to know, is so-and-so home? And you say, yeah, this is so-and-so. Yeah, I'm calling from this, this, that. This is a recorded line, and you need to pay us the money you owe us, and so forth and so on. That person is referred to as a debt collector. Understand, according to Matthew chapter 18, that when the man was forgiven his debt by the king, he goes and collects the debt from his fellow servant, thus violating a spiritual principle called grace. Then he goes and collects the debt from his fellow servant, and when he cannot, he throws him in the jail, and he says, I'm not letting you out until you pay me all the debt you owe. And then the, 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 you know, the nosy saints, the saints are nosy, so the nosy saints go tell on him and say, hey, king, we found he did this, that, and the third. The king summons him and says, you wicked servant, I'm sending you to prison. I'm throwing you in jail that you will pay me all you owe me. And until such time as you pay me all you owe me, I will deliver you to the tormentors. That's the, in the Greek, that word tormentors means torturers. We see that word once again, tormentors, in the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible, in Isaiah 51. And God brings a judgment against the Israelites. And he says that I'm going to turn you over to tormentors who will walk on your back. They will walk on you. These are demonic spirits, friends. And when we talk about debt collectors, it means that there is a spiritual claim in the unseen realm. And because there is a spiritual claim in the unseen realm, these demonic entities, watch this, collect, collect on those claims. That's why some of you are saying, why do I deal with this? And I don't even know, remember doing that. Well, you're not necessarily dealing with that because of what you did. You're dealing with somebody that mama knew, or, or come on somebody, grandma made a covenant with, with a demonic power. And now those demons feel like they have a right to collect the debt because even if you watch any mafia movies, even after the person who, who, who enters into the debt can't pay it, they will begin to collect it from their children and their children's children. I know what you're saying. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Galatians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. You know, the Bible says that, talk about generational curses. But I'm not dealing with generational curses right now. I'll deal with that a little bit later. I'm dealing with spiritual debt. It's not quite the same. It's not quite the same. Spiritual debt. Spiritual debt means that there is an agreement because before you can take on debt, you have to sign an agreement. You must first sign an agreement. What I'm talking about is agreements with demonic powers. You need to hear this. So, one thing to understand is, first of all, that that Deliverance is not something that is sensationalized for social media. Now, listen, I'm, we're a deliverance ministry. I, we cast out demons. We, we do all that. Come to my church, watch online when we have our services. We've had people walk in there and manifest all the time. We cast demons out as Jesus commanded us to do so in Mark 16. But I believe strongly, friends, that many people are unaware. Good God, I feel the Holy Ghost. They are unaware of the subtleties of the way the enemy operates and the legalities and the nuances that the enemy exploits to bring people into bondage. 
So here it is. People think, well, because I didn't roll around on the ground, that I don't have a demon. But you can't keep a job. You can't keep a man. You can't keep a car. Have you ever stopped to think, could there be a demonic power at work here? Could there be a spirit trying to hinder what God has for me? And if the answer is yes, you need to listen to the next things I'm about to say to you. And I'm not going to be long. So I said, God, what's the truth about it? Well, and the Lord showed me, he says, many people are under the power or the influence of a demonic spirit. And there's some people that will tell you, well, no, that's not true. Bro, bro listen, let me tell you something. Being, being as saved as long as I've been saved and reading the Bible as much as I have and, and, and pastoring as long as I have, you cannot tell me that there are not folks who love God, who are well-intended, who are not struggling in specific areas of their life because there is a demonic spirit that they are unaware of that's working. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you tell me. In the name of Jesus, I don't care what you tell me. Many believers, there's a spirit of poverty working in many believers' lives. There's a spirit of confusion working in many believers. That's why Christians can't make decisions and they battle with double-mindedness and they, they, oh man, the Lord told me to be a farmer. And then he, then, okay, yeah, I know, but then he told me to be a rapper. Oh yeah, and then he told me to be a politician and then he told me to be a painter. Then he told me to work at Walmart. These people are tormented in their mind. Don't just, don't just dismiss that to somebody being difficult. Somebody not being able to make a decision. These are demons. Double-mindedness is a spirit. It's not just indecision. It's bondage in your mind. You can't come, you can't make a decision because there is an influence there. Hear me. So God told me, look at this book. He told me that many people are battling with what the scripture calls familiar spirits. Familiar spirits. So I wrote this. It's called Overcoming Familiar Spirits. And I'm not trying to sell the book. Overcoming Familiar Spirits. Deliverance from Unseen Demonic Enemies and Spiritual Death. I did not realize that for a large part of my life, I was dealing with, hear this, unseen demonic enemies. Unseen demonic entities. That's why when I first got bored again, I was afraid to go to sleep at night because I would have seizures when I was sleeping. And I didn't know what it was until the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. Until the Holy Ghost showed me. I did not know that there was a demonic power operating. And the Spirit of God set me free from those demonic powers. We can talk about incubus and succubus. We can talk about uh, we can talk about the fact that there are marriage breaking spirits. We can talk about the fact there are family breaking spirits. We can talk about the fact that in churches many times there are familiar spirits of strife and discord that can follow a person from church to church. That even though okay I left that church because they had a bunch of mess going on. Then I joined another church and there was even more mess in there. And then I left that one and joined the third one. And that one was a hot mess. So why is that? Because spirits, listen to this, are not just attached to buildings. But spirits are attached to agreements. And it's only when the agreement is broken and the debt is discharged and the blood is applied 
that I can walk in total freedom. And this is what I'm trying to tell you something right now. I believe in deliverance and I don't want anybody thinking that I don't. And I've cast out devils and sometimes people cough out. Sometimes people spit into a bucket. Sometimes they throw up. Sometimes they, they ride, they fall out. Those are all different manifestations. But we cheapen deliverance. We cheapen the precious ministry of deliverance when we make it all about that. And then we deceive ourselves by assuming that if I'm not, uh, you know, of a snake's not coming out of my mouth, then, then I'm not bound or I don't have a demon. Not necessarily. There are people that are under demonic influence in specific areas of their lives. And so I want to just pray for you. Sister Aja, or Aja, God bless you. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to write your prayer request in the comment section. Write your prayer request in the comment section. If you're watching this video and you say, Pastor, I hear you. I'm thinking about this. I, I, I know it applies to me. I want you to write your prayer request in the comment section. Write it in the comment section. And I want you to do another thing. I want you to tag a friend in this video. Someone that you know needs to be delivered in a particular area of their life. And number three, this is what I want you to do. I want you to share this video with everybody that you know. It doesn't cost you anything to share. Just share it in Jesus' name. And then number four, I want you to consider this manual that the Lord gave me. It comes out next month, April 19th. This book is officially released, but it's available for pre-order on Amazon. I would encourage you to get it, not because I'm trying to sell books. I've already sold a lot of books. This is not about me trying to make money off of a book. The Lord told me to write this because he said the body of Christ has been struggling in this area. The church has been struggling. You can go to Amazon or anywhere books are sold. Go to Shop the Word. Uh, Shop the Word is the name of the site. Just type in Google Shop the Word. You can order it there or anywhere books are sold. Amazon, Shop the Word, etc. It's already a number one bestseller in demonology. And so I, I want you to understand. The Lord spoke to me and he said, Kenan, many of my people are bound to things that they cannot see. Many of my people are fighting an invisible enemy, an invisible hindrance, an unseen demonic enemy. But tonight I declare that every debt is discharged by the blood of Jesus. Every debt is discharged and every enemy is vanquished by the shed blood of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah of Israel in the world. And I declare over you that as you even hear this tonight, that God's gonna bring things to your attention and remembrance, and you're going to walk in a greater manifestation of freedom, a greater manifestation of the love of God, a greater manifestation of the blessing. Beloved, I love you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Share this.